You have redeemed us, O Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us into a kingdom of priests for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts, to offer you worthy prayer, and ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Thetis appeared, claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men, and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. 
Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of the, his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this truly, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> I think the hard thing for many people of faith is we see these miracles happen in these passages and we ask for some of these types of miracles in our own lives when they don't come true some people get upset God didn't raise everybody from the dead just some. He didn't heal all the deaf or the mute or the blind. He didn't dispel every demon from all of the people. He just did it in certain places for us. For us, so that we would have the ability to see something that was miraculous. And then we were called to share that with others. You know, I shared at the two funerals yesterday that we had here that story of the Polish lady that I witnessed where she was brain dead from a, from a brain bleed, but yet when the life support was pulled off of her, she didn't breathe. But you can see her heart beat for 45 seconds and then she smiles as she opens her eyes and reaches straight up and dies. It could not have happened. It's one of the little miracles that I was blessed to be able to witness, mainly because I share it at every funeral mass. It gives us hope that there is something after this life. And it also shows the power of God because she shouldn't have been able to do that. She had no brain activity, but yet her actions showed that there was activity going on, but it wasn't her, it was through the power of God. Our church is another example of the power of God. It's thriving amidst great opposition. Even within our own church, we have opposition. Why doesn't the church change their teachings? Why doesn't the church do this? Why don't we get with the times? The church in existence today is proof that the power of God is running this church, not human beings. Human beings were running the Roman Empire and the Ottoman Empire, both are gone. We are still here today because 
this church is our Lord's church and he's the one that is leading it. And the apostles all went out and shared everything they knew about Christ, the miracles, his teachings, and all but one of the apostles died a martyr's death. Well, my friends, we too are called to go out and share this news with people that we meet. And I think a lot, a lot of people, it's, I'll go to Mass, and then when I leave Mass, I'm done. I go back into the secular world. Well, that's not what Christ is calling us to do, and I talk about this all the time. I asked the kids the other day, have you told your parents about what you've learned at Mass? Have you told your parents that you're sitting on Calvary? And one kid raised his hand and said, I did, Father. I told my mom the other day that we represent Jesus dying on the cross at every Mass, and we're on Calvary. Then I asked them, I said, well, then, what is the word that we use for what you did? And I said, it begins with an E. And a little second-grade girl, she's not even Catholic, she raises her hand and she says, evangelization. The kids are evangelizing. We need to do the same. So I think we need to ask ourselves, do we love God enough to go out there and share his story with others? Do we love him enough to share the power of the Mass and invite people that maybe aren't coming to come to Mass? Do we love him enough to go out there and unveil for people the power that he has? And just proof that the church continues to go, and maybe not in our country is it growing, but worldwide it is, especially in the African countries. In Father George's country, still 90 plus percent of the people go to Mass every Sunday. It's what it used to be for us, but we've fallen away from believing and sharing the good news. And I think for some people, even coming to Mass is no longer something that's attractive. And it's up to us to go out there and help that attraction start up again. Our Lord is there. He showed us the miracles. Today, he fed people abundantly. And today, he's going to feed us abundantly with the Eucharist. When he's going to breathe on us through the Eucharist, and as the priest ends the Mass, you will hear, go forth, the Mass is ended. That means your work is just beginning right now. Now you've been fed, you've had your meal, your soul is strong. Now go out, and by the way you live your life, share the good news. And when you have the opportunity to talk about the Easter message, we are called to do it. The apostles didn't want to do it, and most of us don't want to do it either. But out of love of the Lord, we are called to do that. So let's continue this Mass today with great joy and thanksgiving that we have a God that's running our church, a God that loves us abundantly, and has showed us the, his power through the miracles that we see in Scripture. And they are miracles. They happened. It's not just something that makes us feel good to read about. So let's go out there and share whatever good news that we feel comfortable with today and tomorrow and every day. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we now bring our prayers and petitions to our most loving and merciful Father. <coughs> for the church, for the vicar of Christ, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Charles, our bishop, for all bishops, priests, deacons, and those in religious life, that remain in unity with each other and always follow all the guidance and teachings of our church, we pray to the Lord. For all world and local leaders, especially those in our country, that they always allow God to guide them as they make decisions for the people, we pray to the Lord. For our children and grandchildren, especially those who have been abused or suffering from depression or from a serious illness, in a special way, we pray for the young people here in the Bloomington area, those who go to St. Charles School, those who go to St. Jerome Primary School in Kapeki, Uganda, 
And for children throughout the world, that they always allow God to guide them as we grow into young adults, we pray to the Lord. And let us pray for all the sick and suffering in our community, especially those that are homebound in hospitals and hospice care and nursing homes, especially those close to death, we pray to the Lord. Let's pray for vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially for seminarians, Casey Deal, Noah Sherman, Isaac Ziefger, and Deacon Tom Kappas, and for those discerning calls to religious life, especially for Sister Maria Gemma, Sister Maria Faustine, and Sister Mary Rose, and for all of those being called to religious life or to the one priesthood of Christ, that they answer the call without fear, we pray to the Lord. Pray for peace in the world, peace in the Middle East, especially in Israel and Gaza, an end of that war. Peace in Ukraine, an end of that war. Peace in our very own country, that they're always able to see the face of God and everybody we meet, especially those who have different opinions than our own, we pray to the Lord. Let's pray for an end to abortion, for respect of life from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died and those that will die this day, we pray to the Lord. And for the intention of this Mass, for Carla Pagani, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, we ask you to receive the prayers of remain this day. Those who hold in the silence of our hearts, we ask you to answer them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness I receive the bread we offer you. For to the earth work of human hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness I receive the wine we offer you. For to the vine work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that to my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace, O Lord, be with you always. You may offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions <clears throat> and was raised again for our justification. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Charles Borromeo, St. Jerome, St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross, St. John, St. Andrew, St. Joseph, Mary the Mother of God.